The Statue of Liberty is mesmerizing. This is one of the few towering structures I can think of where a visitor can legally explore the inside and from the top see the world from the perspective of a monument. Indeed, at 111 feet above the water, looking out over New York Harbor from the Crown is a once in a lifetime experience for most. But can you imagine seeing the same view from the Torches platform, which is over 200 feet higher? Well, according to some sources, from the time of the statue's dedication in 1886 until the Black Tom incident in 1916, visitors could ascend the statue's torch. Many questions now remain. Does the statue really have a torch room? How is the torch accessible and why is the public now denied such a unique chance to stand at the top of the world? Stay tuned, because today we discover a time when tourists could visit the torch of the Statue of Liberty. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. The Statue of Liberty, officially known as Liberty Enlightening the World, is an iconic symbol of freedom and democracy. French historian Edouard de Laboulaye conceived the idea for the statue as a tribute to the friendship between France and the United States and the principles shared by both nations. French sculptor Frédéric Bartholdi was commissioned to design and construct the statue, and this is where things became interesting. The statue was constructed in France in pieces between 1875 and 1884. The copper sheets were shaped over an iron framework designed by Gustav Eiffel, who later became famous for the Eiffel Tower. Once completed, the statue was disassembled into pieces and shipped to America. When it arrived in New York Harbor in 1885, it was reassembled on a pedestal on what is now known as Liberty Island. With President Cleveland presiding over the event, the Statue of Liberty was officially unveiled on October the 28th, 1886, when thousands of spectators and dignitaries from France and the United States attended a dedication ceremony. The public was enchanted with what they saw. Lady Liberty holds a torch in her right hand, symbolizing enlightenment, and a tablet in her left, bearing the date of the American Declaration of Independence. She wears a crown with seven rays, representing the seven continents and the universal concept of liberty. Over the years, the statue has come to symbolize hope and freedom for millions of immigrants who arrived in America seeking a better life. It has served as a welcoming sign for those entering New York Harbor and stands as a symbol of the United States values and ideals. Financing this project was a huge challenge that was widely resolved via public donations. And believe it or not, selling tickets to people wishing to visit the torch proved to be one of the most successful methods of creating the needed public attention. Believe it or not, the torch was the first part of the statue that the public had an opportunity to see in person and visit. You see, during fundraising campaigns, the torch was showcased separately from the rest of the statue during its construction in Paris. It was exhibited at various venues to raise funds for the project. Visitors could enter the torch and view it up close, creating a sense of awe and excitement. The torch was also displayed at international exhibitions to generate interest and garner support for the statue. For example, it was exhibited in Paris and Philadelphia, attracting attention and drawing admiration for its design and symbolism. At one point, the torch was paraded through the streets of Paris and other cities during public events and processions. These spectacles captured the public imagination and helped to raise awareness about the statue and its significance. Although the revenue from ticket sales was necessary, the act of displaying the statue really helped create the type of cultural waves needed for people to donate in mass. Word spread through art. Artists and illustrators depicted the statue with the torch prominently featured in their artwork. These prints and illustrations were widely circulated, spreading the image of the torch and speaking to the people on a symbolic level. Poets and writers often reference the torch in their works, using it as a metaphor for liberty and enlightenment. Their writings contributed to the popular perception of the torch as a beacon of hope and freedom. One notable work is The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus from 1883. 
This poem is engraved on a bronze plaque inside the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty and has become closely associated with the statue and its torch. The poem's final lines mention the quote, golden door, and the lamp beside the golden door, referring to the torch as a symbol that welcomes immigrants coming to America. By highlighting the torch as a central element of the statue's design, and by underlining its symbolism, promoters effectively communicated the message of liberty and freedom associated with the project. Using the torch as a promotional tool helped garner enthusiasm, financial support, and public recognition for the Statue of Liberty. So indeed, there was absolutely a time when anyone could visit the torch of the Statue of Liberty for a small fee. But once the torch was attached to the statue and placed 305 feet above New York Harbor, our story becomes a lot more mysterious. Reading from the National Park Service's FAQ section, answering the question, is the torch open? They respond, quote, the torch has been closed since the Black Tom explosion of July the 30th, 1916, which was one of the largest acts of sabotage to our nation before the event of Pearl Harbor on December the 7th, 1941. Many people think they've been there and confuse it with climbing the spiral staircase that goes to the crown. National Park Service staff must climb a narrow 40-foot ladder in order to maintain floodlights which light the torch. In other words, many people claiming to have visited the torch confused it with the crown and posted their experience online, creating an urban legend as the byproduct. And with over 4.4 million visitors every year, it is possible that at least a few of them could have misinterpreted their experience, especially when considering that visitors look out from the crown, so some of them might not realize where they are from the inside. This makes a lot of sense, especially since the Black Tom incident did cause major damage to the statue. It was a significant act of sabotage that took place on July the 30th, 1916 at the Black Tom Island Munitions Depot in Jersey City, not far from the statue. During World War I, the United States supplied weapons and ammunition to the Allied forces, including Britain and France. Black Tom Island was a significant munitions storage and transfer facility for those shipments. And so the story goes that in the early hours of July the 30th, 1916, German agents executed a planned act of sabotage by igniting a fire on Black Tom Island. The fire quickly spread and caused a massive explosion, destroying the depot and causing significant damage to the surrounding area. The explosion was so powerful that it shattered windows in New York City, caused structural damage to buildings, and was felt as far away as Philadelphia. This incident also resulted in significant physical damage to the Statue of Liberty, which sustained various forms of damage, including dents, pockmarks, and fractures. But the most notable damage occurred to the torch, where the explosion caused the copper flame of the torch to bend and the glass window surrounding the flame to shatter. Due to the damage sustained during this incident, the crown of the Statue of Liberty was also closed to the public in 1916, and it remained closed for decades. It was deemed unsafe for visitors due to stability and structural integrity concerns. However, ultimately, the torch and other damaged parts of the statue underwent extensive restoration efforts. In the 1980s, the original torch was replaced with a replica resembling the original design. The damaged crown and other statue sections were also repaired during this restoration. So here's the thing, their answer seems to imply that before the Black Tom incident, the torch may have been open. Media outlets tend to reiterate the same story, just stating that you could visit the torch before the Black Tom incident. But aside from some illustrations of 19th century New Yorkers looking out over New York Harbor from the torch, we found nothing verifiable with regards to organized tourism to the torch, outside of those initial promotional events in places like the World's Fair in Philadelphia before the entire statue was even standing. Plenty of anecdotal claims do exist on sites like Quora, where Gretchen S. Ellis writes, quote, Only caretakers are allowed up there now. Once people could go inside most of Liberty, well, the statue was still in pieces in various storage areas. That was way back in the 1800s. Years ago, people could climb stairs in Liberty's raised arm and also up to her head and look out the windows in the crown. 
My sister did that in 1948, and I'm sure that's permitted now, but only by special arrangements. I also found this post by Steve Buxolato, who explains, quote, From 1886 to 1916, people could request admission to the torch level, but it was left up to the bureau keepers to allow access. Most people were denied entry because of the dangerous climb required. If you were physically fit, worked on ladders regularly, etc., etc., you might be allowed to climb with a keeper as a guide with you. The problem is that the only access is through a platform at the shoulder of the statue, which is on the downside staircase of the double helix stairs of the Statue of Liberty. Currently, this area is under lock and key, gated with video surveillance. For the maintenance crew, the only means to get access to the torch is a 54-foot ladder, which is within the structure of the arm. There's only one ladder, and only one access, entry, slash exit point to and from the torch. Because of this, and the fact that there is only a low railing, which is just a one inch pipe around the torch to keep anyone from falling 300 feet to their death, the torch is no longer available for anyone to access without a need to do so. Again, let's take his claims with a grain of salt, but reading on his elaboration, well, it makes a lot of sense. The main problem is that people in the past would freeze up on the torch balcony outside of the roughly 12 foot circular platform and would be afraid to move, return to the ladder, etc. They would need to be rescued by staff. Besides, there's also the fact that high winds would make the torch move between three and six inches each way. In other words, the people capable of climbing to the torch would have to be sometimes rescued from the outside area and brought down the tight confines of the ladder again. So the only people who can access the torch today are currently maintenance workers, US Park Police, and people who test the metals and structure for decay and damage and check the structure for stress and water damage every few years. The keeper of the flame was the person who had to access the torch to replace the lights before the current LED system. They went up there about once every three or four weeks. They would wait for several bulbs to go out before making the trip up the ladder to the torch because it was a dangerous climb and having to replace just one bulb at a time it was not worth the effort. The current LED system only needs to be checked once every six to eight months instead of every month, and the bulbs could last for years, which is far less risky for the staff to have to climb up and change the lights. If we accept the idea that there was a time when visitors could access the torch, but that for most visitors it was off limits, the mystical notion of a so-called torch room starts to make sense. The belief that the Statue of Liberty has a torch room may stem from misconceptions or misunderstandings about the statue's design and construction. While the torch of the Statue of Liberty is a prominent feature, it does not have a room or interior space accessible to the public, but there could be a few reasons why some people may think there's a torch room. We know for sure that in the early years after the statue's dedication, a limited number of individuals, including dignitaries and special guests, were granted access to the torch through special arrangements. These rare visits to the torch might have given rise to the misconception that there is a room within. There were also misleading depictions in artwork. Various artistic representations of the Statue of Liberty may depict the torch with an open doorway or an interior space, contributing to the misconception that it has a room inside. We also have to consider the misinterpretation of photos. Photos or images taken from specific angles or perspectives might create an illusion that there is a room within the torch, even though the torch is hollow and inaccessible. So where does that leave us? Well, given the fact that the Park Service's statement on the topic leaves open the possibility that before 1916, visitors could access the torch, I'm inclined to believe that at least some of the anecdotal posts on the subject are made by people who didn't confuse the torch with the crown. With that said, the other reason I made this video is that I'm hoping someone out there watching will bring forward definitive information in our comment section. And if they do, I'll be sure to post a follow-up. I also had this thought that Tom Scott should try to visit the torch of the Statue of Liberty, as he seems like the only YouTuber out there with those kinds of connections. Maybe you guys should reach out and let him know. Anyways, I'm hoping you'll consider subscribing. And until next time, this is Ryan Sokash, 
signing off.